Okay, so today we are discussing the contraction of a protostar. Fine. Now, in my previous classes, we have already covered a lot of stuff, starting from genes in instability. Then we talked about genes criteria and many other things. Right. Now, here, so this is a summary of the genes criteria. So, basically, cloud condensation contraction is possible only if the mass is more than the genes mass. This we have discussed. And here, this J is for genes mass. And this is the genes mass. Similarly, we can talk about this mass. And since uniform density, I, I am considering, so I can convert this mass to a genes density. And similar to this condition, we will have a second, another condition, similar condition, which is average density. So, cloud condensation will be possible only if average density is greater than the genes density. And this is the value of the de genes density. Now, look carefully. This, uh, this expression is basically proportional to inverse 1 by m square. So, this means if the mass is very large, then automatically the genes density or critical density for cloud formation, right, cloud contraction, it will be becoming lower and lower. Now, here we are considering a very simple test example. Let's see how things go. Okay. Now, so we are having a molecular hydrogen cloud. First thing, only molecular hydrogen, H2, nothing else, H2 cloud. So, this is the H2 cloud. Fine. But the temperature 20 Kelvin. Very low. And mass 2 to 10 to power 33 kg. So, this is approximately 1000 solar masses. Okay. Now, these are quite realistic numbers. And if you calculate this genes density, what do you get? 10 to the power minus 22 kg per meter cube. It's a very ridiculously low number, very small density. Okay, that which means basically 10 to the power 5 molecules per meter cube. It's a very small number. So this means that this cloud will independently condense. Right? So condensation is possible. Now, so this is our cloud more or less molecular hydrogen and so this is the temperature 20 Kelvin, this is the mass, how will solar masses? Fine. Now, what is happening to this cloud? This cloud is condensing. So this means that under the action of gravity, it is collapsing. Fine. So gravitational contact. Good. So what will happen? What does it come to your mind? What will happen? Suppose there are two, consider, consider two molecular hydrogen, two hydrogen molecules inside the cloud. Because of this, energy will be released due to gravitational contraction. What will happen to these two molecules? They will be getting the energy which is released due to contraction, right? Each of the molecules will get the energy. Next, what happens? Kimonia. For simplest possibility, okay, the, this energy will go into thermal energy, right? And they will start moving more faster. But no, the first thing that we will that will be done is this. This energy, which is absorbed by the molecules, will first go not to the thermal energy. So, energy absorbed by molecules will first go to number one, dissociation of the molecule, complex system. Remember, this molecule is a complex system. So, the first thing that will do, basically, if you consider a single molecule, if this is a single molecule considered of two hydrogen, first what will happen? Vibration will start, because they are slowly getting energy inside the molecule, vibration will start. And when the vibration is very large, 
dissociation. Right? So, this energy will first go to dissociation of H2. Right? So, after dissociation, again it is slow, again it is getting energy due to gravitational contraction. Contraction is not stopping. It is keep on going and feeding the energy to these molecules. Right? So, the number one state molecule, a system, it starts vibrating, then system breaks down, dissociation. Now, consider a single atom. What will happen? Hydrogen, only proton and electron, only two fellows. The simplest possibility, what? Well, the electron will keep on exciting. And after some time, complete ionization. Right? So, ionization. And you will get what? Well, ionization of hydrogen atom and dissociation of H2 molecule. Okay? So, these are the first two channels where the energy will go. And after that, what we have? We have got just hydrogen plus ion and electrons. Right? Now, further, there is no further possibility. There is no helium inside the cloud. So, what will happen is that now the energy that they will be getting due to this gravitational contraction now it will go to thermal increase the thermal energy of each of them right so first dissociation next ionization and after that yes sir increasing thermal energy of electron and hydrogen atoms. Right? So these are the many steps. And remember the first is dissociation, then ionization, then thermal. Now look carefully into the diagram. What happens is that during the first two processes, during the first two processes, the molecules they just collapse freely. They are freely collapsing and this process is going on. The, the, the atoms inside the molecule they are started vibrating, 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 dissociation. Then again atom, then ionization. This is all this process when it is happening. This is happening when they are freely collapsing. Free collapse. But now here when the thermal energy and the, this energy is free, now when we start feeling the thermal energy then their kinetic energy starts increasing and then the pressure will start to develop. Till now there is no pressure in these two cases because they are just freely falling. Okay. Density is still very low, they are very far from each other but the moment the gravitational contraction energy feeds and they start getting the thermal energy then even during the free fall, they started moving more faster, more faster. And as a result, there is a chance of colliding. And this increases pressure. And that pressure will eventually be the responsible for the opposite pressure. Right? So this is gravitational force due to gravitation. And this is the force due to gas, gas pressure. So this is the way the things happen. So in the initial phase, unopposed free fall. And later on, it starts. Even though gravity is the one which is dominant, but still it's getting slowly opposition. Because now energy is going into thermal channels. Okay. So now, let's first consider the dissociation of hydrogen molecule and the energy required is 4.5 eV. And then, what about ionization of hydrogen atom? We know ionization energy is 13.6 eV. Right? So, if this is the scenario, then the energy needed to dissociate and ionize all the hydrogen first molecules into atoms and then ionize them, right? So first dissociate hydrogen molecule and next ionize 
hydrogen atom. So what will be the energy? Total mass of the cloud n divided by mass of molecular hydrogen approximately 2 mH and then into the energy required Pd. Similarly, energy required to ionize total mass of the cloud divided by the mass of the hydrogen atom into the ionization energy here. Now, so this is the case, good, and this energy needed, who gives this energy to this cloud? Of course, the gravitational contraction. So, the energy due to gravitational collapse, say from initial radius R1 to radius R2, how much is this? We know expression Gm square by R2, first R2, which is the smaller one, and then R1, which is the bigger one. So, this is the energy. So now we have to equate the two of them and then this way we can get an estimate, right? So let's see a test example. Suppose the mass is, a, is that of the sun, solar mass. And then if you do this calculation, this calculation, you will see that this energy, energy needed to dissociate ionize all this, this comes out around 3 to 10 to the power 39 joules and if we equate that given the initial radius is r1 is of the order of 10 to the power 15 meters so this is given this we calculated from there then and after equating this two we will get the value of r2 to be 10 to the power 11 meters so this means that this much energy will be given by cloud by dissociation and ionization and this will cause the entire cloud to collapse from radius of and considering the spherical cloud right radius of 10 to the power 15 meter to that of 10 to the power 11 meters okay so thousand more than 10,000 times the radius shrinks over here so just numbers Okay, so we we'll see contraction of a protostar, right? And this is our example of a protostar which we just considered. Now, so as I have mentioned, what did we consider? We consider a molecular hydrogen cloud only of solar mass. All that. So the first phase, first stage during the contraction is the rapid collapse stage and what happens here here energy due to gravitational collapse this basically feeds your dissociation of molecules and later on ionization of atoms this is what happens during this rapid collapse stage so the energy goes to feed the dissociation of molecular ionization of atoms and as a result if suppose the cloud is contracting so if we have two molecules what are they doing they are freely falling they are freely falling the molecules so here the molecules are freely falling and during this free fall all this is happening first dissociation then ionization and so on and so forth now later on what will happen is that when all the hydrogen atoms they have ionized okay next what will happen after all this ionization is done now the two molecules which are freely falling now what will happen the energy the gravitational contraction they will go into the thermal energy thermal channel so now they will start moving faster and faster and as a result there can be collisions and all that and this what will cause is number one this will cause the cloud this cloud to become opaque to its own radiation this is the first stage and the next one is cloud becomes opaque to its 
own radiation right and because of this increased thermal energy what will happen gas pressure will increase overall kinetic pressure will increase and gravity which was the only one till now till the first stage gravity was the only one present dominant ideal virtually very negligible gas pressure now gas pressure starts to develop okay so now slowly pressure will increase and after some time this pressure will be the one responsible to uphold the gravity and we will have hydrostatic equilibrium okay and because of this increasing gas pressure let us assume that the matter doesn't become degenerate then what will happen the temperature will increase so this is the way things happen during the cloud contraction first the free fall stage and later on the slow contraction after that what will happen the slow contraction will stop when hydrostatic equilibrium is established right so so contraction stops when ac is established right so you must remember these stages they are the most pivotal important points over there okay okay so contraction of the protostar right first stage is the rapid collapse and next is the slow contraction now if you consider the example which i have just shown here to you previously what was the temperature from which we started the contraction the temperature was e is equal to 20 kelvin so during the rapid collapse stage temperature remains the same e is equal to 20 kelvin but as i told you slowly slow contraction starts and eventually during this phase the temperature will keep on increasing so now let us try to find out what is the temperature at this slow when the slow contraction stage starts so temperature when starts so for that first we have to find the kinetic energy now when the slow contraction starts slow contraction starts when all the molecules have dissociated hydrogen molecules have dissociated all the atoms have ionized these two right so what's the kinetic energy in that case because now slow contraction means the energy will go to kinetic channels only right so the kinetic energy is mass divided into 3 kvt and now what's the gravitational energy the gravitational energy assuming r1 is much much greater than r2 so we will get only this term and this is the energy released due to dissociation and ionization okay so dissociation and ionization now so these are the stuff but still now they are two unrelated they are not related to each other but remember we talked about the video theorem so video theorem means we can relate these two very important terms or important energies gravitational energy and kinetic energy and if we do this if we use this video theorem from there we get this expression for a non relativistic gas remember what was the relation for relativistic gas egr plus eke two was absent for the relativistic system remember so this is for a non relativistic system and so if we equate this two together then we will get the value of kvt uh, you will get this expression from where if you calculate i have shown you the values of ei and ed so you get the temperature around 30000 kelvin so look what has happened so temperature has started increasing from t is equal to 20 to p is equal to 30000 kelvin and this is where now slowly overall opacity starts to increase 
okay the matter will become okay opaque slowly and gradually and now the gas pressure also becomes starts to increase so remember all this stuff mass remains the same but temperature how does it evolve during this contraction of a protostar stage yes regarding this application of radio theory you must remember that we derive this relation not only for the non relativistic case but also there is a very important assumption involved and what was that the entire system must be in hydrostatic equilibrium okay and this is what is happening here and so we have applied here so during the when the slow contraction starts now the gravity and the pressure they start equating slowly gravity wins over but the system is overall <coughs> close to the hydrostatic equilibrium right and as a result we are using this expression over here and what does this expression means this means that the energy due to the gravitational collapse half of it will be lost from the surface and only half of it one half is lost from the surface and another half will go to increase the kinetic energy okay this is important so now we can say things like that previously the system was not in hydrostatic equilibrium there was a free fall so we couldn't say any stuff like that okay so in this state if i ask you can you relate the kinetic and potential energies you would say no i cannot use radial theory in this part but here when the system starts to approach hydrostatic equilibrium now we can use this relation so gravitational energy and kinetic energy we can relate and now we can say that due to the gravitational contraction half will be lost and half will go to increase the kinetic energy this is important okay so during cloud contraction you must remember when you have to say this statement that energy half is lost half goes to increase the kinetic energy this is when the system approaches hydrostatic equilibrium before this you cannot say and during the contraction of a protostar there are stages when hydrostatic equilibrium is not established and this is during the first phase okay keep this in mind because i will ask you questions based on this so what's the question the reaction to the free body and free body that is slow contraction that goes through so the question is how the things start to happen from rapid collapse to slow contraction i have already told you but now let me tell you in more details so first all the molecules are falling right now what do you think all of a sudden the ionization will happen all of a sudden the dissociation will happen no the things will happen very slowly first in the entire stuff first only one molecule will be dissociated then after some time some other molecule is dissociated then some other then some other then some other and then after all the molecules are dissociated then again after some time some atom some particular atom it gets ionized then some other atom gets ionized then some other then some other so the whole process doesn't take place all at once it takes time and during the same time that it keeps on collapsing okay get it so the thing is that the the more there is dissociation the more there is ionization this means opacity increases slowly the gas pressure will increase in a way okay slowly things will because there will be more chances for energy to go to kinetic channel and so this doesn't happen all at once in fact it takes for this particular test case i told you it takes around 10 to the power 7 to 10 to the power 8 years it's much more than our life okay it doesn't take place all of a sudden the, the uh, so the catch is in the time scale of in uh, studying astrophysics na this is the problem all okay, at 10 to the power 7 come on how much is our age now how much is our age it's around say 70 years 
how much is that of an ant's egg or say a butterfly's egg or a small insect which lives for a day now compare its lifetime to our lifetime okay 365 into 70 times of that but still it's nowhere near to 10 to the power 7 okay 